whether it's half-life, whether it's, um, what was the other one, double. Uh, so for mine, it says a new car is purchased. The value of the car depreciates. And what does that mean? Depreciate means that it goes down. All right, now I did pull up the formula sheet. So this is exponential functions. So I come to exponential equations. And this is that equation right there. The only thing is, though, they don't tell you what these numbers mean. A is what you start with. B is your growth or decay. X is time. So in these kind of questions, for B, instead of B, um, you're going to go either if it's decaying, in my question, it's 1 minus your decimal. This is after you take your percent and you divide it by 100. That's what goes where, where B is. And if it's increasing or it's gaining value, it's 1 plus your decimal divided by 100. Okay, so I just wanted to just remind you of that. Then A is whatever it starts with. So for my question, this is what it starts with. Um, it's depreciating, so I'm going to be using this one right here. And it's take the deci the percentage, take the percent divided by 100, and then do 1 minus that percent. And then you'll be, um, then put x uh, as 12. All right, so I'm going to do it in the calculator, but I did want to show you um, what that looks like on your formula sheet. So on the calculator real quick. So it is y equals a b raised to the x power so i'm just showing you what it is so what is this what is the value so it's asking me what is the value so my starting a in my question is twenty thousand three hundred all right then my b remember i said one minus um or one plus so this one is depreciating so one is going to be one minus and you have to put in the fraction of um the percent which is eight point seven five divided by 100 because we've got to make it a decimal then close the parentheses all right and then all of it raised to the x power right so um shift that to the x power and my x is 12. okay so you just put in that in the calculator of course if if yours was growing you change the minus sign to a plus all right if it's compound interest you'd use a completely different formula so this is my answer to the nearest cent. So remember, cents is um, like 25 cents or whatever, right? So you have six, seven, five, six, seven, six, five, sorry, point, and I'm going to write three numbers, three, five, and then three. So cent means I just need two numbers, right? But you first have to see what does this next number do? So is that three going to change anything? No, so this is my answer. If it was a five, for example, it would change it to a six. But in my case, it hasn't changed anything. So that's how you round. Nearest cent means two numbers after the decimal. All right, then you're going to go to table to exponential. All right, so again, you're going to put in the table. So you plus sign, insert the table, literally type it in, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Type in the y values, 1, 0 0.5. 0.25 and 0.125 and we just use this um, same formula right here y equals a b x for exponential so everything exponential here's exponential formula so that's this is what it is y equals a b x so that's what I'm going to put here so y equals a b raised to the x power all right, now, it doesn't give me any answers because Desmos wants a couple of things that you have to put in. For one, you're telling it, hey, I want from this table for you to give me some answers. But in this table, it refers to x as x1 and y as one, y sub 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So put a 1 after the y, and every x needs to have a 1 after it. Okay, now that got rid of the numbers, meaning there's one more thing that it doesn't like, which is this equal sign for some reason. We're going to delete that, and we're going to put a squiggly line. So you're going to press the keypad. A, B, C, and then squiggly line is on the bottom right. Once you do that, notice your answers have come in. So to transfer your answers in into um, Desmos, you're going to go ahead and type in what you would have before. Y equals A, B, X, right? So, and I did shift 6 to get the power. So what's my A value? A is 1. So instead of A, I'm going to put 1. I like to put B in parentheses when I do mine. Instead of B, I'm going to put 0 0.5. And 
it says an equation in general, so I don't need to change the x. Now, I don't know if this is going to be right because this is an invisible one, so technically you could take that off, but I'm just going to leave it there and see if um, Delta Math cares. It does not care. All right, so that's how you go from a table to an equation. And while I'm on this, any table, okay, you can go to the exponential or you can go to linear. So linear, you'd use this equation and it will give you M and B. Or you can go to quadratic and put this equation in um, right here and it will give you A, B, and um, C. So same process for every single table. All right, so let's take a look at Half-Life and Dublin. Okay, so remember, it's it's pretty much the same formula as before, as an exponential function y equals a b x. However, you are going to have to remember that the difference with your growth or um, your decay is halving or it's doubling, and there is a little bit of a difference on how you write the time. So let's go ahead and do this question. Um, all right, so a new car is purchased, so I'm going to write my general formula out. Y equals A, parentheses, B, raised, shift 6 to the X power, so that we are aware of what it is. All right, so a new car is purchased, okay? So where does that go? Is that my A, B, or X? That's going to be my A, so that's 18,000. Over time, and its value depreciates by, so it depreciates, you know, it's going down, by one half. So it's telling you, this is half-life, that B is going to be half. So you can write 1 divided by 2, or you can write 0.5. Every 6 years, okay, so every 6 years is going to depreciate by 1 half. What does that mean? That means in year 1, so it's depreciating by half every 6 years. That means in 6 years, this 18,000 is going to um go down by half, so it's going to be 9,000. But this is after six years. Then again, it's going to depreciate again, so year six, then it's going to be year 12, it's going to depreciate again by um, half again, okay? So that's what the question is saying. But it's not asking you when is it, um, you know, what's your answer in six years or in 12 years. Instead, it's asking you about 19 years. So uh, six years from now will be eight, 18 years. Um, half of that will be two. 2250. Okay, so that's not quite 19. So it's going to be close to this number, but not quite 19. Well, there's a little bit of a formula that we can use to um, figure this out instead of manually doing it by hand, like the way we're doing right now. Um, so quite simply, you when you put it in here, you'll put your 18,000, you'll do one half, um, just as you've done right here. However, your time is what's different, because notice you have time here, and you also have time here, right? And all that you need to know for that is that when you're putting your time in here, it's going to be your your total number of years over your half-life. Or if you get a doubling question, your double, okay? Now, the only difference between your double and half-life is right here. I've put half because it's half-life. If it has double, I would put two, okay? All right, so when I come to X to put that in parentheses, because if you don't put it in parentheses, it comes out of there for whatever reason. So I need the total number of years. What's my total number of years? 19. Okay, 19 divided by my years of my half-life or years of my double. In this case, it's every six years. And really what you're doing is you're just finding out your... Um, how do I make this bigger? You're just finding out exactly what this number is. So it's it's going to be close to this 22. Can you see that? 2,000 was close to that 2,250 because that was 18 years, not 19 years. Okay, so to the round, to the nearest $100. Okay, so this number is 2004.5221582. All right, nearest $100. Remember what we were talking about, okay, in, in class. Um, this is the nearest dollar, the nearest tens of dollars, the nearest hundreds of dollars. So this is really what I'm looking for. Nearest hundreds of dollars is right here, okay? Because it's 2,000, um, no hundreds, no tens, and $4. So the nearest hundred, is this close to, is this 004, is this close to um, $0 or is it close to $100? Well, it's close to 
zero dollars. So this will be two thousand to the nearest hundred dollars. Um, so you come here, two thousand. All right, and again, the same thing as, let's see if, all right, in fact, I'll do this question as well, because this one is a double, right? So the same thing, exact same thing. So your starting point is, you know, is your A, so 2,200. Instead of half in it now, I'm doubling it. So the number is two. The total number of years, which is in this case, or time, the total number of time, which is 13 hours, over the amount of time it takes to double or to half, okay, which is six. And so that answer is nine, eight, seven, seven, blah, 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 to the nearest whole number, which means what? No decimals, right? So if there are no decimals, you look at this number right after, okay? Five and above, add one more. Four and below, just ignore. So this is five and above, so it's going to add one more. So that's going to be nine, eight. So adding one dollar here would be nine eight seven eight nine eight seven eight, and I don't know if it's gonna let me submit this nine eight seven eight, but we'll go ahead and try, and it did. Okay, so the only difference, of course, is doubling or you're halving, but it's a total number of years over the time it takes to half or double. All right, let's take a look at compounding, solving for a future value. So this is straight out of a formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the formula for compound compounding so it's an exponential equation but it's a special kind and it's this formula right here and you just need to know what each of those things are so i'm going to type it out capital a equals capital p one plus r divided by n close the parentheses then shift six or hit this button right here um then nt now realize Oh, actually, it stayed up there. That's fine. Okay, cool. All right, so you just need to know what each of these things are. All right, so I'm going to go over it as I do my question. All right, A is your final amount, what you end up with at the end. P is my principal, what I start off with. R is my interest rate, but remember, you cannot put a percent in there. You have to divide it by 100 before you do that. N is the number of times that it is compounded. In other words, if it is compounded monthly, it is 12 times that it is compounded within a year. So it's the number of times compounded within a year. So if it's compounded daily, it's 365. If it's weekly, how many weeks are there in a year? 52. If it's yearly, it's one and so forth. And then T is just time. So let's put in the numbers that we know. Sarah invested 38,000, invested. So that's the money she's putting in. That's your principal. So 3,800, sorry. In an account paying an interest rate of 3.6%. So that's my interest rate. That's my R. However, you cannot put percent in there. So before you can put percent, you must turn it, get rid of that percent. And how do you do that? You divide by 100. So that's 0 0.036. 0 0.036. All right. How many times is it compounded? It's compounded daily. Okay. So how many days in a year? 365. That's your N. Okay, and I see an N here, so that's going to also be 365. And I'm just going to put, you can put multiplication, um, or you could put parentheses, however you want for the time. All right, assuming no deposits or withdrawals are made, how much money to the nearest $100 would be in the account after 15 years? And so T is equal to 15. Boom. So take out the equal sign and it's going to give you a number to the nearest hundred dollars. Okay. So to the nearest hundred dollars. So that just means so we have six, six, five, two, two, zero point six five two nearest hundred dollars again this is your ten this is your ones your tens your hundreds so nearest hundred dollars we're concerned about this number right here we are between five hundred and six hundred dollars where is five twenty is five twenty closer to five hundred or is it closer to six hundred so hopefully you said it's closer to five hundred so that's gonna be six thousand five hundred dollars six thousand five hundred dollars
All right. So the formula is about knowing um, what each thing means. So that's solving for a future value. But if you're solving for your principal value, that means you're solving for P. Again, you start off with the formula. So I'm just going to put the formula all the way back. All right. So this is our formula from the straight from this reference sheet right here. You just have to know what it means. So let's fill in all the numbers we know. Ty is going to invest in an account paying an interest rate of 4.7%. Okay, so that's an interest rate, so it goes right here. But again, remember, you cannot put interest, um, the percent in the calculator. You actually have to find out what it is. So that's 4.7 divided by 100. And that's the number you put in as R, so 0 0.047. So you come right here. Delete 0 0.047. It's compounded monthly. Okay, so how many months in a year? 12. So that's your N. N is the number of times it's compounded. So it's compounded 12. And then let's go ahead and put multiplication right there. All right, and then how much would Tyree need to invest the nearest dollar for the amount to reach 98,000? So this is equal to 98,000. So the question is, uh, and is there a time? Oh, here we go. To reach, I was wondering where the time was, to reach um, 98,000 in eight years. So the time is eight. So we are solving an equation for P. All right, for you to understand this, it's really um, some basic algebra that you need to understand. Like, let's say, for example, I had 10 equals P um, times five. And I asked you to solve for P. What would you do? You would divide both sides by 5. So you would say, and I'll just copy this line here so I can show you. You would say this side divided by 5. And then this side divided by 5. Oops, not like that. Hold on. Oh, divided by 5. P times. All right, because these two fives, these two fives would cross out, leaving just 10 divided by 5, which would be 2, which is equal to P. So P would be equal to 2. And what you would have done is just divided both sides by 5 to isolate P. Well, look at it here. This is your 10, and all of this is just a number. This is just a number. It's, say, the number 5. So what you need to do, you need to divide both sides by this number. And I'll prove to you that it's just a number. So I'll put it right here real quick. You see, it's a number, right? So it's just like this number five. So you would divide everything or you would divide both sides by P. So what I'm going to do is take that 9,800, 98,000, sorry, divided by this number here, which I'm just going to control and paste. So my this is going to give you equal my P. So I just solved the equation, right, for equal P. So this is P right here my principal amount, and I need to round that to the nearest dollar, okay? So I need to round that to the nearest dollar. All right, so to the nearest dollar, all right, so no cents. Nearest dollar means no cents at all, right? So this is my cutoff point, all right? There's as many dollars as I have. I look at this number here, five and above, add one more, four and below, just ignore. So this is four and below, so you're just going to ignore. So the answer is 67,336. All right, so we're going to take a look at finding average rate of change from a table, equation, and a graph. And really, if you can do one, you can do all. All right, the table is easy. So remember, average rate of change, you need box. So in my case, you're going to do parentheses. Then it's parentheses minus parentheses over. So I'm going to do divided first. So you got to do divided so I can do that. Parentheses minus, I'm sorry, parentheses minus parentheses. All right, then minus parentheses. So once you have that set up, parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses. 
they're always going to give you the x values and remember we're going off of what is this slope right average rate of change so if you go look right here average rate of change it says the change in the y divided by the change in the x and if you look to the left they give you the values so you can see x on the bottom y on the top so x on the bottom so x and it looks like it's which x x2 first so the second one so the second one is 13 so 13 and then the first one which is 4 so x on the bottom then all you have to do once you put that in is match it for the y so I'm gonna go look for 13 in the table right here what's the y value 30 so you're gonna match that to 30 then you're gonna match 4 what are you gonna match 4 to 48 once you put it in that's your answer you're done all right so that's from a table then when you do it from a equation it's the same thing you're just going to copy and paste it control c and i'm going to leave this up here because i need it control v all right then you know fix whatever needs to be fixed like i don't need that at the end all right something has come up all right so once i get an equation now that i know how to do it from a table all i need to do is make this a table right to make that a table click on the settings hit table and now it's a table and now you're looking for your intervals again so once again i'm going to delete this so it's parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses make sure that that's what it is and not this this is something different if you have this this would be wrong okay so make sure that that division bar goes over the whole thing all right so now i'm looking for again the first number if you forgot is the second x and then the first x on the bottom so second x is 11 so that goes right there first x is 3 and then match it so i don't see an 11 here oh my gosh just come in here and type it 11 is 21 and then three if i don't see a three there just come to any number type three it's 53. so once again it works it out for you and that's negative four all right so all these questions are really the same thing but from three different um, values so all right find domain and range with technology so let's go ahead and control c and then control v and then kind of change it up control x will cut control v will paste control x will cut control v will paste um, but that doesn't look the same i need to put a square root so i'm gonna go here put the square root and inside that needs to be the x so just make sure that you've copied down exactly what it looks like all right range range remember is um, bottom to top right it's your y values and then domain is your x values i don't see a graph here i'm gonna press home it's gonna zoom in with my graph so i'm gonna actually do both domain and range it just depending on which one you get right so once again um, domain is x range is y so range is y values and domain is x if you're looking at the x-axis the x-axis starts from the left hand side and goes to the right and then if you're looking at the y-axis that's from the bottom and goes to the top that's what you're looking for so if my question was asking me for domain where is my graph starting right here and because i'm doing x i'm going right and left where does it go like this so it starts at five does it include five yes it does so that's closed and where does it stop infinity okay does it include infinity no because that's not a number all right in terms of range so now i'm going to do range it's the same process only you're going from the bottom to the top so let's start from the bottom of the graph that's the bottom right so what's the bottom oh i did domain wrong y'all i'm tripping domain is this way right so that number is zero to infinity my bad my bad i don't know why i said five all right so my domain is my x values so it's, it starts from zero because that's where this graph starts from zero and it goes to infinity and then my range my range is my y values okay so starting from here the bottom so starting from the bottom to the top so it starts at five and it goes this way forever because this graph keeps going up and up and up and up so it starts at five and it goes towards infinity and i'll do another question just in case i confused you on this one
All right, and then that's how you write it. And you can write it two, of two ways. So you can use inter set interval notation, which is what I just did, but I'm going to write it in terms of um, inequalities. It's going to be y is greater than, and it's not 5, it's negative 5. Y'all, I'm just tripping all the way around. Negative 5. So I'll do open and close, and I'll say it's going from negative 5 to infinity. All right, I'll do another problem because... Oh, I can't do another one? Hold on. Oh, good, I can. All right, so I'm going to do another problem because I might have confused you with that. All right, so plus 1, minus 4. You just put it in. Once you put it in, you just look at it. All right, so find the domain. So this is the x values, right? So we're going to look at the x values. So starting from here, from the so it's left to right, right? X values left to right. So starting from here, it goes like this forever, right? But look at the values. So that's this number here, which is negative 1 to infinity. Then if I was looking at, so I'll go ahead and put that in there. So negative 1 to infinity, open and closed. Negative 1 to infinity. And then if I was looking at the range, the range is from the bottom of the graph. So the graph starts right here. Whatever number this is, this is negative 4. And it keeps going this way forever because it's still climbing all the way here. So the range would be negative 4 to what? To positive infinity. And then this would be a number, so that's closed, and this is open. All right, but I, that wasn't my question. My question was the range. So boom. Uh, next. We're going to take a look at the last one. All right, so looking from a graph, again, the same kind of idea. All right, so what's my second? So I'm going to come to my boxes here or my parentheses and delete all the numbers. All right, and they tell me my second one is 2. So that goes over here. And again, if you forget, just come to the formula sheet right there. In fact, I should do this. All right, so right here, the second one goes first in the bottom. So two, and then the first one in here. And you just have to find what those matching equivalents are. So when x is two, what's y? So when x is two, right here, y is zero. When x is one, x is one right here, I go up to the graph, y is 10. All right, so again, to read the graph, you just go to it. So when I'm finding x is two, I go right here, y is zero, y one, I mean, when x is 1, it's 10. If x was 7, I'd go to x is 7, go to the graph, and then y would be 40. If x was uh, negative 2, for example, I'd go to negative 2, go to the graph, and y would be negative 32-ish, but they won't ask you for something in between. And that's pretty much how you do all of those questions. So you can do all of those questions relatively fast. All right. Next Common ratio and common difference. All right, so this is whether you know something is geometric or arithmetic. Geometric, you're constantly multiplying to get the next number. Arithmetic, you are adding or subtracting to get the next number. And if it's neither, then you're not doing anything. What does this say? Find the common ratio of the sequence. Okay, so I'm finding the um, what number am I multiplying each time. To do that, you always take the second number. So the second number, because it's multiplication, the opposite is division. Second number divided by the first number. So negative 2. And now I'm just going to check it. What that is saying is when I multiply it by negative 2 every time, I'll get the next number. So if I did times negative 2, I get uh, negative 18. If I take negative 18 and I multiply it by negative 2, I should get 36 and so forth. So yes, that is the pattern. So the common ratio here is negative 2. What am I multiplying by each time? And if it was addition, uh, if it was, um, let me see if they actually have that. Oh, it doesn't give me a next problem, next problem. What if I did, for example, okay, common, so if it was a, an arithmetic sequence, it would mean the second number minus the first number will be a common difference. Second number minus the first number, which is 5. So my common difference is 5, meaning every time I add 5, I get the next number, see? common difference is 5. So second number divided by the first number if it's geometric. Second number minus the first number if it's arithmetic. All right.
distinguish between those two. So are you adding and subtracting or are you um, multiplying each time? So looking from 3 to 12, am I multiplying? Looks like times 4. If I do 12 times 4, will I get 48? I don't know. Let me check. All right, so 12 divided by, so second number divided by the first. And then the second number subtract from the first. All right, so it could either be a multiplying by 4 or I'm adding 9, one of the two. So let's check. If I do 3 times 4, I get 12. If I do times 4 again, do I get 48? I do. Whereas this one, I get, I'm adding 9, right? So this one is saying 3 plus 9. I get the next number, 12. But if I add 9 again, do I get 36? I don't. So this one is geometric. And the sequence is a common ratio, and it's equal to, what was I multiplying by? 4. Okay, so once you decide which one it is, you answer the questions. All right, select an explicit formula. So remember, we talked about how we're just going to use the multiple choice. So these are test-taking skills. We're just going to use the multiple choice to see what it is instead of doing it from scratch. So the question is, what is the formula for the nth term of the given sequence? So these are all the different formulas. The thing to remember about um, these formulas is that n is the number of terms. So this one is the first term, this one is the second, this one is the third, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what you're asking yourself to do is, when n is 1, all right, when I put 1 there, will the term that I get out be 4? So if I put 1 where I see n, will it be 4? So what you can do in terms of um, putting this in Desmos is you can just copy the right-hand side of each equation for every single one. Because this we're doing multiple choice, right? For every single one so that I know which one the answer is. And I'll copy them in order so I can keep the answer the same. All right, and then this is to the power, so make sure you fix it to the power of, boom. All right, so those are my four answer choices. And now I'm going to say when n is 1, do I get 4? So I come right here, and I do 1. Did I get 4? I did. All right, what about the second term? So if I put the second one, will I get 1? So if I put 2, do I get 1? I do. And if I put 3, do I get negative 2? I don't. Okay, so A is not the answer. So now I'm going to check B, wherever I see N. Put it in parentheses. I'm going to put the first term. Do I get 4? I don't, so it's not that one. I'm going to go to C, put parentheses for where N is. So that's what I'm doing. Put in parentheses where N is and put in 1, 2, and 3, and do I get these numbers? So 1, do I get 4? I do. 2, do I get... No, I, I need to get 1, not 7. So the answer must be this last one. But I'm going to check. So again, where n is, you're going to put parentheses, and then you're going to put it on. Okay, so when n is 1, I get 4. When I put the second one, do I get 1? I do not. Okay, so that wasn't the answer, so I must have made a mistake. And it looks like, why did I put negative 2 here? It must have been 2. All right, so I'm going to check again. So if it's 1, it's 4. If it's 2, is it 1? Yes. And if it's 3, it's negative 2. So the answer is actually A. I'm tripping. So remember... All right, this is, n is just the, the number of terms. So this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. So when you substitute the first term, the first one, do I get 4 as the answer? When I substitute this for the second one, do I get 1 as the answer? When I put the third one, do I get negative 2? Okay, that's really all that you're doing. And then once you do that, you match it up. All right. Uh, select recursive formula. So again, we're working backwards. Okay, what this one is saying, which recursive would produce this sequence? So they tell you that the first one, the first term is 3. And then they're asking you in general what happens. So let me go over, because this one's not really a calculator, it's just understanding. This is saying this. When I do say, so they say the first one is that one, right? So now I'm looking at the second one. So this is the second term. So when I take the second term, when I'm looking for the, the second one, and then I subtract 1 to it, I'm going to get the first term. So what this is saying is, is negative 2 times whatever the first one was, which is this, then minus 3, is that going to give you 3? That's the question. Okay, so I'll put that in the calculator. 
So I have a negative two, and again, I'll do the same thing for all of them, negative two, and I'll leave this part blank because that's what my substitution is, and then three. As a matter of fact, can I, just kind of going to group four times and then change it. All right, the second one is negative five, and then minus two. Third one is negative three, minus two. And the last one is negative 2 minus 5. All right, so what it's saying is when I put the term before it, right, that's what this is. Put the term before it, do I get the next one? So they give you the first one. The first term is 3. So you see all of this is 3, right? So when I put in that first term, so when I put in 3, do I get the next term? So I should get, when I put in 3, I should get the next term, which is negative 11. Which one of that gives me that? So these last two. So now I'm looking at these two. When I put in the term, so now I'm on A2, right? A2 is now 11. So when I put in that term and do this to it, do I get 17? So now when I put in the next term, which is negative 11, so right here, because these are the only two that are working so far. So negative 11 and negative 11. Do I get the next one, which is 17? Only on the last equation. Okay, so I'm going to say that again because it actually I'm going to do a, a different example. Uh, let's see, let me get this wrong so I can do another one. So, yep, it was the last one. Um, I just want to do another problem again. So, I'm going to copy down what it is. So, with parentheses where the previous term is. So, this one is four, this one is plus four. This one is 2 and 3. We might as well delete all of this. And this one is 4 and negative 4. This one is 3 and positive 2. All right, so same thing as before. When I, well, if I'm looking for the second term, when a is 2, um, 2 minus 1 will give me 1. So this is negative 4 times the first term plus 4. Okay, that's what that's how that reads. So when I look at it, when I put in the first one, which is 6, so I'm put the first one, 6, do I get 20? That's the question. Okay, so 6, 6, 6, and 6. I only get 20 on the last two. So it's not A, it's not A, and it's not B. So it's one of these two. Now it's saying when I put 20 in there, will I get 76? That's what that is. So I only need to do it on the last two. So when I put 20, oops, 20, which one gives me 76? C. So this is your answer. Just that easy.